A reading from 1 Timothy. Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought into this world so that, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you, for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in inapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to, whom, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who are in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good formation for the foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord gives justice, the Lord gives justice to those who are oppressed. The Lord gives justice, the Lord gives justice to those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. The Lord gives justice, the Lord gives justice to those who are oppressed. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises from ever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captives free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations, Alleluia. The Lord gives justice, the Lord gives justice to all who are oppressed. I'd invite any children that would like to come forward this morning. Any children that might like to come forward.
All right. Come on up, Jacob. Well, Jacob, come on and have a seat by anybody. And anybody else can answer, too. I'm just wondering, have you, has there ever been anything between you and mom and dad? Is there, what's between us and your parents right now? Me. Yeah? Your hand? Yeah. Uh-huh. And there's some chairs in between us and people in between us. Well, today in the gospel reading, we're talking about things that come between people. So, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Me. No, not yet. Maybe someday you'll be to the Grand Canyon or someplace. And there's these big open valleys. And in the gospel, we're calling them chasms today. And sometimes there are chasms in our lives. There might be people that get between us or things. Today we're talking about how money can get between us. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Good chat, you and me. Thanks for coming up. (laughs) Self-pump. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hungry, his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things. And Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The truth is, I like to think of myself as a good old Minnesotan. I'm uh, not a big fan of confrontation, you see. I'll happily stand up here and wave at you and smile, give you a thumbs up from the safety of my little bubble, hoping that you'll just wave and smile back at me from the safety of your bubble. Sure, I'm willing to give you some critical feedback, most likely in the form of a compliment sandwich. Hey, you did such a great job. But I wonder if you just consider the possibility of maybe doing something just a tiny bit differently. You did such a great job, though. Thank you so much for your good work. I found myself this week having my bubble dissolve a little bit as I read today's gospel text. 
In his usual way, Jesus likes to get our attention, people's attention, by telling a story. The hard thing this week was it was a tough story to swallow. The oozing sores, the slobbering dogs, the place of torment, the great chasm. How can we even imagine such things? But that's how it was back then. There was no health care system, no welfare checks, no food banks. Things were a bit different. In those days, the very life of one depended on another. And often, those people were so disgustingly rich, they had slaves upon slaves and money upon money that when there was someone poor at their doorstep, they just simply ignored them and looked the other way. Out of sight means out of mind. And keeping things out of mind is an excellent way to build a chasm. So then we have to ask ourselves about today's text. Does it really suggest that money and wealth equals evil and eternal damnation? Should we do all we can to get rid of our wealth and privilege so we don't use up our good things now? I can't help but wonder personally if as a white cisgender man with a comfortable income, is this text condemning me today? Or more likely, is it a wake-up call? For Jesus says that the rich man has already received his good things on earth. And Lazarus is now being comforted after a life of pain and agony. No, I don't think Jesus is literally talking about heaven and hell here. The focus of this story is not about where you or I or our neighbor is going to end up after death. Rather, it's about the chasms that already exist here on earth today and separate us presently from God's kingdom. Jesus is talking specifically about the chasm between wealth and poverty. In order to grab attention and give some punch, he describes it as an uncrossable chasm in death. Now, I don't think that this means the chasm is unbridgeable here on earth. But once we die, it will be too late for us to bridge that chasm, bring the kingdom here on earth. Jesus is saying if we want this world to look like the kingdom of God, we need to start bridging these chasms here and now. I think it's safe to say we can all agree that this world, it's, it doesn't look like the kingdom if we don't support those in need. If we have the means to help others, I think we can all agree that we should do so. And it's not simply the request of God to fling things across the chasm. We can't just throw food and money and resources across the bridge in hopes that that will fix the problem. Rather, Jesus is calling us to bridge this divide, to find a way across the chasm and be in relationship with those on the other side. Or even better yet, to remove the chasm altogether. Yes, Jesus is using this stark contrast of the rich man and Lazarus to wake us up and call us to action. I don't know about you, but I find today there are a lot of prophetic voices that are claiming wake-up calls and trying to call us to action. We have youth finding their voice in demanding change in climate change, in climate. We have a black preacher demanding change in the ELCA. We have moms demanding action against gun violence and so many more. I wonder what you think the chasms are today. 
I have the priv- privilege of standing up behind this pulpit, so I might tell you a couple of things that I think are chasms. I believe that honestly, we as a society are mistreating the earth that God has entrusted to our care. I question whether or not we are doing everything we can to welcome those into this church that don't otherwise feel welcome. And the truth is, I don't think I'm doing my best personally to keep my daughter Adeline safe against gun violence. Of course, there are a lot of things we're doing really well here at Mount Olive. We have done cleanup days, we recycle, we talk about climate and what we can do as a, as a community to care for the earth. We've become a reconciling in Christ congregation and have done our best to think about what it means to welcome people from the LGBTQ plus community. And we've gone even a step further now to start an alternative worshiping community called the Olive Branch that creates a safe space for those that don't feel comfortable even entering a church. Additionally, we provide space for moms demand action to meet every month and talk about how we can further legislation and other things to to help gun, (coughs) pardon me, to help stop gun violence in, in America. But doing all these things is not simply a way to check a box. It's not all we can do. We have to continue asking questions of ourselves and continue to learn about our place and role in these things. And most importantly, we need to continue building relationship with those that we have hurt, with those on the other side of these chasms. To be, to be clear, we understand that this is not simply a one-way bridge. No, this isn't just where the rich are helping the poor and it's a one-way action. No, this is about relationship, which always demands give and take. And so the other side of this story is that we ask, and, and it's just as hard, maybe even harder, but for the poor person to give forgiveness to the rich man? How hard would it be for Lazarus who's been at the gate all this time being ignored to now extend forgiveness to the rich man? For us to bridge and remove earthly chasms, we have to be willing to step out of our safe zone, out of our bubble. And we have to be in relationship with those on the other side. We need to show love both to the rich and the poor, the sick and the well, the earth and those that are destroying it. The truth is that the cries of the needy might be faint, but are still unmistakable to those who love God. Jesus wants to hear them. I think that's why he told this story, this awful story, so that we might be disturbed enough to remember it and live differently, like grace does. My mother-in-law, a Lutheran pastor, went to Africa to support the ordination of women in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Cameroon. While there, she met Grace. Grace was one of four women prepared and waiting for ordination. And while she was waiting, because this process was taking a long time, she had to find additional work. So she started as a receptionist at the dentistry department in the Mission Hospital. As Grace took my mother-in-law on a tour of what we North Americans would describe as a pitiful, pitifully equipped dentist office, she saw a newly arrived patient, one without an appointment, one without any money, and one in a lot of pain. So my mother-in-law asked Grace, what happens if someone comes to the hospital and has no money to pay? 
Is there any government or social assistance? Does the hospital treat a certain number of patients for free? Or are they simply turned away? Grace replied, We care for all who come. For the pain of an infected tooth is a terrible one, and if left untreated, will do damage in so many other areas of the body. Our department head has instructed us to never turn anyone away. Knowing what she did about the state of healthcare in Cameroon, my mother-in-law was amazed and asked how they managed to do so with such an obviously limited budget. Grace said that it came out of the salary line in the clinic's budget. That meant when there was a lot of needy, unscheduled, non-paying patients, there were very small paychecks for the clinic's employees. Yes, God's nature is to turn the tables on injustice and greed and exalt the lowly. So you could see today's story as a warning not to overlook those around us in need. And it is God's nature to love the whole world. So we can also see it as an invitation to live into fuller, more meaningful and joyous lives by sharing ourselves, our time, our talent, and yes, certainly our wealth with those around us here and now. It is this that makes it clear God's kingdom is for everyone. Amen.